Hey guys, Steph B. Sandy, and welcome back to my channel. This is my bullet journaling video. And here I'm showing you the main supplies that I used, but rather than rattle that off to you, I'm gonna list it all below in the description with links if you're interested in checking them out for yourself. In the first page, when you open the book, I'm making an index page because I know that that's classic for bullet journals if you're following the normal set of guidelines. And I'm starting off next with a semi-annual at a glance page where I draw the calendars for quick reference. And I'm making this from June to December since I'm starting out journaling in the middle of the year. I thought that it would be a good idea. Also, this book is a little bit smaller than the really popular, I think it's Lectrum 1917 journal. So I figured that it would be better to use a smaller period of time to track in this book. But I do wanna tell you that this is my first bullet journaling video, and I'll be the first to say that it is far from perfect. I did keep it simple, but I do also wanna let you know that I plan on being really creative in the future, and I'm definitely gonna be making more journaling videos, and I'm gonna have a lot of fun with it. So I really like the way that this page came out, just the way that the layout and design is. And in the future, this may be one of the only planning pages that I actually keep because I am more on the lines of like tracking and thoughts. I prefer to journal for those reasons as opposed to daily planning, but I will still incorporate some planning, just not as much as I did probably in this video. I wanted to base this video on minimalistic and classic style and keep it simple for my first attempt. The spacing worked out perfectly, luckily, on my first try. And after I write out all the months and the days, I do have just enough space to include a notes section where I will be adding in events and key plans and dates that I want to keep in mind. And it's like the perfect amount of room since I do generally write really small. So yeah, this page definitely came out perfect and I could see using this layout for future spreads. So I have my planner that I'm using somewhat as a straight edge and also for reference just so I get my days correct. I'm just kind of grabbing anything as a straight edge and it's working fine. Moving on, I'm going to make a June intro page where I include a larger calendar so that I can use that as reference and I'll have plenty more room to add notes and events that are more specific to the month. I don't usually plan too far ahead, so I think it's perfect to have the monthly spread like this. I can see going back to this page really frequently and I definitely plan to make use out of it. I also added a little bit of a design at the top just to highlight June and I like the way that that came out. I'm just making little boxes for each of the dates and making sure that that's centered on the page. And moving on, I'm making a weekly spread. I only did this for the first week of the month and then I left the following set of pages blank so that I can play around with different designs so I can get a feel for what I like best. This is one spread where I want to add a lot of my own creativity. I wasn't crazy about how this page came out, but I'll be sure to update you once I put one together that I'm actually really happy with. So stay tuned, that'll probably be in my next bullet journaling video. I just made circles for the dates and I'm doing block letters or block numbers to show the dates, but it came out way too big. And then I colored it in with my highlighter pens and it just came out too bright for my liking. Overall, it's not horrible. It's just not my style. And when I look at it, it doesn't really inspire me to use it, but I definitely have some ideas in my head that I plan to use in these next set of pages. And I will definitely keep you updated on that.
Next up, this is just a journal page. And I did leave this blank for the most part because I want to go back and add a lot of words in there and I don't even want to have lines to restrict my thoughts on there. And then that was pretty simple. So moving on to my YouTube page, this is where I track my schedule, ideas, and stats. So I will fill in the videos that I post next to the number date and highlight it so it stands out because I obviously don't post videos every single day, but I'm not sure what days I'm actually going to post. So I made a block just for my ideas so I can brainstorm in there. I also am putting together a box for stats where I will track my subscribers and also my top videos so that it gives me an idea for what videos I will plan in the future. So I'm not really happy that I circled all of those. I wouldn't do that again in the future. But other than that, I'm really happy with how that page came out. And now I'm just making a blog ideas page, which is similar to the journaling page. It's going to highlight mostly the writing. So I didn't add much on there. And the wish list page is going to be a little bit more exciting. It's cool because once I cross the items off the list, I know I'm becoming more and more successful because I am more of a saver than a spender. So I plan to go back and also add an expenses and budgeting page, but keep that more private. But if I get these items and get them all, then yeah, I definitely know that I am successful because I'm usually not one to spend that much. I also really like how the titles came out and I plan to keep using that exact outline for that. And I'll plan on making all my title pages kind of match. So this is my product tracker next, and that's mostly to help me plan my videos where I do first impressions and product reviews, which is one of my favorite types of videos to do. I'm making three columns, the first one for items, another one for the product details, and a third one for my opinions of the product. This will also help me during the videos that I'm filming and just to keep track and keep everything really organized. I filled in a couple of examples, but I definitely have more to go back in and add later. I just wanted to give you guys a good example just to start with how it's going to look with my personal handwriting, and I think this came out really nice. The mood tracker is another favorite kind of spread for me personally. I've seen some really creative ideas for this just floating around Instagram, but I already keep a mood journal where I track a word each day to describe my mood and a percentage that I would rate my mood. So I wanted to stick with that method, but there are a lot of cool variations of this spread. I just listed the days vertically down the page and I'll just go back in and fill that in each day. Lastly, we have a little moments page. It's kind of a thing that my fiance and I say all the time. So it's just to appreciate and remember the little moments. As for this quote, I did add a S in it's when I realized that it was missing. So just ignore that for the video. I wrote a couple of examples just to show underneath the little moments page. And I plan to go back and decorate the left hand side a little bit more. I just wanted to incorporate some brush lettering since that is more of my thing. Now I'm just flipping through to find where I could add in little details and pops of color where I see fit. Some of the pages were looking a little bit bland for my liking and I wanted to just go back and add a couple little things. I'm not that great at drawing, but I do love brush lettering and hand lettering in general. So I'll definitely make sure that the writing looks good. That's another reason I wanted to do a follow-up video with you guys to show you what the page looks like after it has been used up. And I'm super excited for that. And if you are too, then be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I will be uploading tons of beauty and bullet journaling videos on my channel. And I would love if you would stick around. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video.